Hello, I'm Matthew Wilkinson, historian with Heritage Mississauga, and thank you for joining us here on Ask a Historian. Each week, we'll take questions and we'll explore the fascinating story of the city of Mississauga together. This week, we're delighted to be joined by Greg Carraro, a teacher, educator, reenactor, and historian, and we will explore the fascinating story of the Battle of Vimy Ridge and what it means to Canadian identity. Joining me this week on Ask a Historian is Greg Carraro, and many of you may know Greg over the years from Heritage Mississauga. Greg is a longtime vice president at Heritage Mississauga, a well-known reenactor, but also on the, the other hat of things, uh, Greg is a teacher, an educator, and a passionate historian with particular bent for, for things of the military uh, genre. Uh, and so we've invited Greg on this week to explore the topic of the Battle of Vimy Ridge. Uh, not only just the, the why we teach it and why it is important to, to our remembrance, but also why uh, the role that Vimy Ridge plays in the concept of identity and what it is, uh, how it connects to what we uh, understand ourselves as Canadians uh, and, and Canada's connections to the First World War. So, Greg, thank you for joining us here on Ask a Historian. Oh, well, thanks for having me, Matthew. Always a pleasure. I, I'm thrilled you're coming back. We haven't scared you off after, <laughs> after a few episodes. Um, so, I, I know in your uh, professional uh, realm, uh, standing up in front of students and, and, uh, and talking your ear off about history and uh, uh, directing them to things that are important to the Canadian story. I know the First World War and uh, moments within, such as the Battle of Vimy Ridge, are important in the context of education. So can you tell me, uh, highlight a little bit of, of uh, why you teach it um, and uh, what aspects you teach about the battle? Because there's so many ways we can approach the story of the battle itself. Yeah, oh, there are. I mean, that's. I think that's part of its appeal, is it's the... Dyna how dynamic the, the battle is in, in the actual um, execution of the event and the, uh, like the iconic nature of the, the battle itself, right? So um, in uh, the grade 10 curriculum, it is one of a, a series of battles that we focus on where there's a significant Canadian contribution. So of course, Salat and Ypres and um, various battles of the Somme. Passchendaele, of course, and, and Vimy Ridge, we, we take a look at each and every one of these battles, primarily um, as a way of uh, demonstrating the growing uh, uh, competency and uh, reputation of the Canada Corps in that war. I mean, we got to remember, outside of uh, the Boer War, uh, it, you know, this was our first international engagement. This was the first time that the world had seen us. And um, really, we shocked our, our performance along with other uh, colonial powers like Australia and New Zealand, really um, impressed the British and I think scared the Germans a great deal. So, um, you know, Vimy kind of sits there as the, as the pinnacle of Canada's uh, success in that uh, great war. You have, and you mentioned the colonial powers too, and of course, India is in, in that mix as well. We absolutely, have some, uh, absolutely. amazing past presentations on, on the Indian contingent of the, of the British forces. But from the Canadian perspective, a lot has been made of Vimy representing that moment when Canada stood on its own two feet. It was Canadian forces fighting as Canadians under Canadian command um, for the first time in the, in the war. Uh, and it wouldn't be the last time, of course, but it was the first time from, from kind of everything we've been told about it. How do, you, how do you approach the story of the battle itself uh, uh, to your students? Like what, what, what aspects do you teach uh, over the battle? Well, I mean, of course, there are two things that I, apart from the, aside from the actual battle itself, I highlight two things. One, of course, the Bimmy Ridge is the first time that all four divisions of the Canada Corps are fighting together. Um, I also use it as an opportunity to introduce um, General Arthur Curry, uh, who in himself is, is an absolute uh, symbol of, of Canadian uh, ingenuity and uh, valor, in my opinion, uh, intelligence as well. Um, and I also use it to talk about the innovations in which the uh, Canada Corps uh, were able to uh, adopt or to use successfully to in integrate into the battle plan. I mean, the idea that a soldier would actually uh, be given some, uh, um, uh, some small amount of independence in the sense that each soldier was given a compass 
Each soldier was given a map. They had drilled, they knew their objectives. They weren't just um, peons being pointed in different directions by commanders. I mean, uh, it got to the point by that stage in the war as a general strategy, but specifically with this particular raid that um, Canadian units could break down to the size of a platoon and still be self-sufficient and not have to worry about waiting for, you know, information about where to go next. You know, we read about, you know, past battles and past wars where, you know, commanders is, is killed or injured and, you know, the soldiers are just literally standing around waiting for their next orders. This wasn't the case at Vimy. Um, and so, you know, that's just one example of the many innovations the the, uh, you know, the tunneling and of course uh, the, the, the Canadian, the hiding underground in those gonna... those vast chalk mines uh, only to, to appear and, and, and just charge the enemy was definitely something which, uh, I don't think the Germans had, had prepared for um, you know, stuff like that. So the innovations and the idea that this was, as I like to explain it, um, a pure maple syrup affair. Uh, of course, with the exception of the overall command going to um, future Governor General um, Julian Bing, um, it was a completely, and one a battalion of uh, British soldiers, it was an entirely Canadian affair. So those are the two things that I, I like to highlight. So to, to give, uh, uh, and I want to come back to the battle itself, but to give it a, a context in the historical narrative, and we kind of jumped in the middle and we'll go back to the beginning in a sense. Uh, the uh, the Battle of Vimy Ridge, uh, for those who are, are learning about it and, and perhaps not as well versed in the subject, it's part of a much larger offensive. It's one piece of uh, the, the Arras offensive uh, in, in the spring of 1917. Um, and this was a, an, an allied push across a, a vast front um, to, uh, against German, uh, German forces that were well entrenched. Um, and can you, can you give a, maybe a little bit of a context in which the Battle of Vimy Ridge played out in the bigger picture of that spring of 1917? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I can tell you that it was the most uh, successful uh, point of the of the offensive. Um, there was uh, there was success. Uh, the British further to the south of the Canadians also reached their objectives, but the, all, all along the line, there were there were many failures and there were many drawn out battles that were not uh, settled within the duration of this particular battle. So, um, you say it correctly. It was a massive offensive. It was a massive push. Um, but very limited success. And um, I think that that's something that, in fact, is lost on a lot of Canadians. I mean, everyone recognizes Vimy. Everyone's probably, many people have read the uh, Pierre Burton book, but I don't think people realize just how difficult the slog it was and how unsuccessful um, the British, uh, most of the British and the French were in, in achieving their objectives. Right. Now, I, you know, I've read some some perspectives on on uh, Vimy and, and kind of the Arras offensive as well, and, and you know, they, they they look at it as you know uh, this um, the Canadians being handed an objective that was thought to be uh, unachievable, um, that others had attempted to uh, attack this strategic high ridge, uh, literally a ridge of land a, over a flat plain. Um, without success, and, and that Canadians weren't so much as expected to succeed as much as they were to expected to occupy the Germans. Um, can you talk yep. a little bit about what you kind of you know what was handed to the Canadians? Uh, right. Well, I mean, there's a couple things there, and and of course it, it, there was a lot of lobbying behind the scenes um, in Canada to have this uh, this particular part of the offensive handed to the Canadian Corps. Um, there, there was a, there was a lot of behind the scenes maneuvering. So, um, you know, it was handed to us, but we were very happy to take it. Um, I should add also though, that yes, uh, the British, first the French and then the British attempted it, I believe it was the French first, attempted to take the ridge and failed. And that's always a point of pride. And we say, well, we managed to do what uh, two superpowers were or two great powers weren't able to do. In fact, I, I should add, we took the ridge with 50,000 less troops than the French had. That's a significant, you know, and, and, and the Germans by this point had been so so assured of, the, of their their invincibility that when they heard that the Canadians were coming into line, they said, oh, there's just one more, one more army we're gonna repel that we could be home for dinner, so to speak. But um, so uh, 
sorry, the, the initial question was no, just that the, you know what it was that the Canadians were handed to 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 deal with. Yeah, they um, were they were handed a, 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 what was thought to be an impossible task. I mean, this is something that there was certainly in the in the British High Command there was no belief that there would be a success in this. Um, I don't I don't believe that they were put there as a diversionary tactic. I mean, that's that that idea has been out put out there. But I don't think that the 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 success, the immediate success was going to be there. I, and again, I also have to stress this was not only a victory. I, I, this was, I mean, the entire offensive eventually was a victory. But this essentially happened within the span of a morning. Right. The ridge was occupied by the early afternoon. Yeah. The speed at which this this entire event was happening shocked everybody and it was the it was the speed of the success which i believe uh, convinced the germans not to mount the 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 expected counteroffensive that the germans are so well known for right like um yeah well one of the one of the the, the one of the things i'm most compelled with with the story of vimy of course we we know the battle of vimy ridge begins in the early morning hours of april 9th uh, like you're saying, by the afternoon, most of the objectives have been 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 met. Um, it, the dates are given kind of April 9th to April 12th. To the 12th, and, and yeah. That's that's kind of the the, the wrap up of the. Well, we the, had to take the pimple. The pimple. We had to take and the, the pimple. Uh, the, the different hills <laughs> that were numbered there as yeah. well. But uh, what what I always find most compelling are the months leading up to Vimy, and you had alluded to it, but the sheer planning that went in, not only to the Arras offensive as a as a whole, but the the Canadian planning that went into the preparation for and the execution of the attack on Vimy Ridge. I think that's an amazing story. I mean, they, they had troops underground, uh, forgive me for, I believe it's starting in February, they're starting their, mm -hmm. uh, their, their uh, organization of troops, uh, the movement of supplies, the, the hiding of all the supplies coming in, all the troops coming in, all the movements and everything from the German observers. The building uh, of railways yeah. to, to bring munitions to the front quicker. Yep, like little tiny mini tracks were laid out. Um, by the, our navies, um, and also even even before that, there was um, in England an incredible effort made to um, to create a, a very large to scale map of the entire ridge. So every single um, officer in this battle knew exactly where they needed to be at just the right time. And of course, that brings to mind another bit of Vimy mythology that is the Vimy Glide. We didn't invent what was called the creeping barrage, but it was executed so, so well executed during Vimy that it was likened to a dance. And, you know, hence the name Vimy Glide. And this this is referring to the the uh, the bombardment leading up to the the artillery bar, 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 bombardment. To say that word bombard bar. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's right. The um, that'll go out in editing. Um, the, um, the 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 whole idea was this. I, I mean, there was a we all have learned this and you know we teach that the beginning of the war we have officers who had gone to uh to officers academies and they learned basically what was 19th century uh warfare line battles and and you know that sort of napoleonic sort of style but they were fighting a, a 20th century battle with regards to the technology the 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 rate of fire of machine guns uh, by the way, machine guns initially were not seen as that much of a big deal by the Allied forces at the beginning of the war. The Germans realized their value, but the Allies hadn't. Um, so the tactics had to be had to be changed. They had to be altered. And um, by the time we get to Vimy, we we see a very different style of warfare. Definitely, we see a very different style of warfare. Um, uh, so the creeping barrage, essentially, you know, the the Germans had uh, machine gun emplacements that were were spaced in such a way that there was overlap so there was no area of the field of fire that was out of range of machine guns um, so you can't advance across no man's land and not expect to take heavy casualties as long as these these guns were being manned so the idea of the creeping barrage was the uh the, and it had to be timed is that the your your troops would have to advance in in the field at a certain period of time and be expected to be at a certain objective at a certain time we all at the all the while while your artillery is firing overhead and creating a uh, sort of an iron shield right over your heads to keep the Germans in their their dugouts. The Germans are very dug in. The Germans, you know, very early in the war, as soon as they stopped uh, gaining ground, dug in, dug deep, and you know, 
you know, different battles, especially during the Psalm, will demonstrate that, you know, it doesn't matter if you fire a thousand uh, guns at the enemy, they're going to come out relatively unscathed. So if you can't bomb them out of their, their holes, then you keep them in your holes while you advance. And, and that essentially is the creeping barrage. And at Vimy, it was done to perfection. Right. Now, you, you have this, uh, you know, the, the, the atrocity of, of Vimy in terms of just the casualties is stunning. I mean, this is a Canadian victory, but it's a Canadian victory at cost. Um, you have uh, 15,000 Canadians in four divisions. Uh, at, at top of my head, I think it's 3,600, 3,700 uh, casualties, 7,000 wounded. I mean, you're, you're dealing with more than half of your, your, your troops that participated at Vimy are either killed or wounded. Um, it is a victory, but it, it, the, the butcher's bill is, is significant. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, just to carry the story a little bit further, there are many Vimy veterans who then find themselves in, in the horrific battles of Passchendaele. Right. So, you know, um, there, these, these men really put their time in. Absolutely. Uh, it, it just, it, it's stunning. And, 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 you know, to bring it home, one of the fascinating things that we've been able to explore here in, at Heritage Mississauga has been the Mississauga connections, not only to the First World War, but specifically to, uh, you know, moments within, like the Battle of Vimy Ridge, you know, amongst those thousands of Canadians that participated, and, and unfortunately, many of whom became casualties, we have seven killed and 11 wounded that we've documented. Uh, at Vimy, and then probably in the neighborhood of around 50 that participated at Vimy. Uh, that, that number, the, the participation number is not entirely known, but, um, you know, Mississauga was a small rural community at a time. And, and if you look at that, you know, across the board of, you know, all the communities that sent, you know, hundreds of soldiers, thousands of soldiers to the Canadian Front and the Canadian Expeditionary Force, Vimy hits home across the country at the local level, like it, it, it is more, maybe more so. The Psalm, of course, has many more casualties, and Passchendaele is yet to happen uh, when when Vimy comes. But Vimy is, you know, it's the Canadian high point um, at that point in the war for Canadian achievement. But it's also the the telling point of sacrifice too. It, I would say so. I mean. Um, it, you and you you get the sense from reading the diaries of, of men who who survived it the the the, the loss of, of, of comrades is just unbelievable and and of course I mean let's acknowledge the ability and the prowess of the Germans at, uh, as a fighting force yeah. uh, they they you know this was uh, this was a, a, a win based on tactical superiority it wasn't anything to do with the cowardice of the, the cowardliness of, of the German soldiers. And, and certainly they had perfected their, their, their gun, their gunners were very good. And um, yeah, it, it was, it was an absolute bloodbath that we had to win, but it was a bloodbath, definitely. I, I remember reading a book on uh, Western civilization and of course, significant component being the world wars. And uh, there was a, a quote from Acadian soldier about Vimy Ridge that uh, was, it was a spin on what you normally hear. And, and, and just to hear the words he say, there was no better defended location than Vimy That's right. Ridge. So, so and, and, it's that tactical you're talking about where like, they, 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 they won, uh, they, they were victorious, the Canadians at Vimy Ridge, but it wasn't like they rolled over the enemy. This was a tactical win. No, and, 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 and the way in which they did it is, is also important because the Germans had said, I mean, uh, there's something that I was meaning to say before. The Germans said, yeah, you, anyone can take the ridge, holding it, holding it, you're not going to do. Yeah. And, and the way in which the Canadians so, um, uh, so overwhelmingly beat the Germans in every possible way that the Germans realized, well, it's not even going to really make much of a point to mount a major offensive. Right. Um, but again, I, going back to, I'm just trying to find the note I had here. There is, there is definitely um, Canadian papers uh, report on the victory in glowing terms. Um, so do most, although not all, British uh, papers. Uh, then the, the Americans, I mean, uh, here's this little country that lives to the north of this, this you know, cocksure rising power of the United States and and they have nothing but glowing things to say they they refer to the Canadian victory as an inspiration to their war effort and um, and and so 
but they also mention they also say that this courage came at a price and 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 the, the loss of Canadian blood spilt was going to be what was going to help to be the beginning of the end of this war because really Vimy was the first decisive victory of the war it's That's arguable right. but really I'm going to cling to that belief because I really do feel that it was the most uh the most it was a the most absolute victory without any question. I, I was going to say the spin that I've heard on that term, and you're, you're very right, and I'm agreeing with you entirely, but it wasn't necessarily the, the victory as much as it was the German defeat, if that makes sense. It, it, yeah. It, it, it was the the loss of uh, of a, a well-tested and, and well-proven uh, contingent of the German army for the first time in a sense that you you come back to the there was no counteroffensive. Uh, you know this was this was a a surrendering of an entrenched position for the first time. And I think my own take on that as well is that this is also an indication that the wheels are starting to come off um, the the truck or the train for the German army because um, by 1917 both. Well, all of the armies now are, are reliant on draftees and, uh, and, right. and, you know, the volunteer armies, you know, are, are generally far and few between. However, the Canadians uh, feel the majority of volunteers in this victory. Um, conscription had still not, uh, you know, come to come to being. So, you know, these were men who outside of this, this war were engaged in all sorts of professions in this country. And... Um, Whereas the Germans had been this this army of, of you know this army of veterans who had been so successful in the first year and a half of the war by 1917 it's a different quality of men right they're much younger they're much older they're 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 really their hearts not into the battle as much as it would have been in the early part of the war they stopped being the fearful army that that we saw them to be and we expected them to be up until that point. So let's flash so forward. In a battle of equals, in a battle of equals, the Canadians come out on top. And then that's an important part of it. You consider where Canada is as a country. We are a dominion of the British Empire in the First World War. We do not control our own policy. We do not control our military uh, structure. Um, our job was to supply men in support of the war effort overseas. I mean, that was that was a Canadian's job. Um, I, I remember the recruiting posters: "Send more men." <laughs> you know, like that's. A, um, and we weren't prepared. I mean, we had a, we had this we, we had this kind of loosely um, loosely uh, connected up until the the was out, and then of course, uh, Colonel Sam Hughes, so-called Colonel, um, is responsible for building this new army. But um, before the war starts, we don't have much of a we have no professional army to speak of, really, not any significance. Um, and then we build an army out of out of nothing. We're able to quickly uh, by 19. I don't remember the year exactly, but soon able to send not one, not two, but three, and eventually four entire divisions overseas yeah. of volunteers. Uh, th there's a lot of things that we should hit on regarding this. Well, and I, again, no cons no conscripts are yet on the on the field. No, it, it's, it's a fascinating story when you think what you're saying, you know, the, we built an army out of nothing. Uh, it's just, you know, we, we sent, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, 600,000 soldiers uh, overseas uh, during, the, during right. the First World War. And, you know, just yes. one in eight do not come home, or sorry, one in 10 do not come home. And, you know, just an astronomical contribution. And, and of course, we're not alone. We, Great Britain had, had its many co colonies, but Canada's contribution was not small. Uh, just flash forward a little bit in, in, our, in our narrative here. Um, you know, we have the luxury in our day and time of looking back on this moment. Um, uh, you know, here we are 104 years later, if my math is correct, uh, looking back on the Battle of Vimy Ridge. There are no living veterans from, from Vimy Ridge today. Um, you teach this. Uh, uh, you, you, you teach, uh, you know, there's a reason why you teach it. There's an importance to it. Can you explore a little bit of why Vimy Ridge is important to the Canadian identity, to the civic identity in terms of uh, developing roots, developing connection to the country in which you live? Uh, you do a for world, you do a phenomenal, yeah, I would love to. But, but you do a phenomenal First World War project on commemorating our local veterans, and Vimy must play a role in that as well. So I just sorry, I just want to give you the floor on exploring 
why Vimy Ridge is important. Yeah, and, and before I go on, I want to thank Heritage Mississauga as well, and, and you in particular, for supplying so much of that vital biographical information for the soldiers that my students, for want of a better word, adopt for this assignment um, of getting to know a, a World War I soldier. Um, you know, it's, it's not the most strategic position. You know, I do speak of it as being a, a, an area that this ridge does give uh, superiority uh, over the region. Um, but I mean, it, it's, it wasn't something that had to be taken at all costs. It, only, it had to be taken as a consequence of pushing the Germans back for sure. But there were other battles far more strategically important than Vimy Ridge. So it wasn't because of the importance of the battle itself that makes it so iconic amongst Canadians. And, and I don't even know if it has to do with the fact that it's the first time that all of the Canadian armies fight together. Um, but but Vimy, Vimy is a, a turning point in the way that we see ourselves. So regardless of anything to do with being out there on the battlefield, what it has to do with is Canadians seeing themselves as Canadian first and as members of the British Empire second. And, and you'll see these, um, even, you know, you'll see graffiti, whether it's in the, in the chalk mines or on the sides of uh, vehicles, you'll see Canadian soldiers, uh, there's images of Canadian soldiers drawing maple leaves, right? Now, of course, the maple leaf is not yet a part of our, our national flag, which doesn't come until 1965, of course, but it is, it has already been a part of, of our national identity. And all of a sudden you start seeing, um, you know, this, this maple leaf iconography popping up everywhere because now it's like, yeah, I mean, we're, we're British, but so what? There's British fighting all along here. To say you're Canadian is say, yeah, we're the guys that the Germans call the devils in dresses. We're the guys that never give up ground. We're the guys that won this battle. We're the guys that, we're the, we're the shock troops. We're all the... Canadian soldiers wanted bragging rights and and you know Vimy Ridge was the icing on the cake to convince all Canadian soldiers no we want to stand out we're not just British soldiers we're Canadian soldiers and this is what we've done so the you know the the battle is important in the sense that Canadian the soldiers themselves saw themselves as Canadians and 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 wanted to show themselves as being apart from the rest of the British Empire and and of course this infectious kind of attitude is shared at home um, you know, there's already a growing movement. And I got to say, to his credit, for all of his flaws, uh, Colonel Hughes uh, was a very big uh, Britisher, but he also was quite a Canadian patriot. And he did fight hard to, um, to ensure that Canada had a separate voice in decision making in some regards in the war. And of course, soon after Vimy Ridge, virtually immediately after, um, uh, Arthur Curry becomes the uh, supreme commander of the Canadian forces and leads the, the Canadian, the Canada Corps. Um, and, and so again, there's this another layer. We have now a, Brit, a Canadian army led by a Canadian general. And um, this can't be anything but a source of pride for people back home who are reading this in the paper. And, and they're seeing that Canada is, is distinct and it's being singled out. And, you know, I guess one last observation is a typical Canadian one, I would imagine. We don't tend to look at our own in any sort of awestruck way until others start. True, yes. Notice. Specifically the United States and Great Britain. And as I've already said, looking at, you know, looking at the, the headlines of the foreign papers, it was all Canada. No one tried to say it was part of any other, you know, this was a Canadian victory. And I think that probably that was the final bit of encouragement for people back home to say, yeah, oh, Canada. Yeah. Stand a bit taller, a bit more broad shouldered and be proud of what you've, what you've accomplished. And yeah. um, so We're growing up. It, We're growing yeah. up. So we, we look at the modern era and, uh, you know, we do, you know, we do, um, we reflect on remembrance, uh, we reflect on uh, loss of life, um, uh, you know, we have cenotaphs, we do services at and the like. There is the symbol in the word Vimy, um, I think resonates more than any other moment in Canadian history in terms of just even if you don't know what it is, you've heard the term. You know what I mean? Like that's that's yeah, there. There are people who recognize the uh, the symbol of Vimy, and by that I mean the uh, the, the Vimy Memorial. 
um, you know, the twin towers t t rising above the, the the plane of Vimy or the plane and the the hill of Vimy Ridge, and uh, there's pins to commemorate it. But the word Vimy uh, conjures up this idea of Canadian sacrifice, um, uh, perhaps more so than any other term of remembrance. But why and Canadian victory? Canadian victory. Yes, absolutely. Why, why has Vimy, in your your view, uh, become this uh, this such a key symbol of Canadian remembrance and Canadian service above and beyond anything else, because Canada has gone on to serve in, in every major conflict um, uh, with, with distinction. You know, whether you look at uh, the second world war or the Korean war or Afghanistan and, you know, the, 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 the innumerable peacekeeping missions that, that Canada has been involved in as well. But Vimy kind of stands as the symbol of remembrance and, and, uh, um, what are your thoughts on that? Why, why does Vimy stand out to such this? I mean, we may have already touched on all of it. I'm just, just one of those things where it just seems like it, it is that. Yeah, no, and I, and I, I, I it's, you know, it, it bears repeating that I think that it is because it was, it was not only, it, not only was it the first, you know, um, overwhelming victory for the allies in the war, but it was Canada's first real complete victory really as an independent nation period, anywhere, you know, um, again, I go back to it's very limited international experience in the Boer War. And before that, you know, uh, any battles that the Canadian uh, military fought was on our own soil. Um, Vimy was uh, the first big international complete victory, if you want to look at it that way. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it provides a foundation, it provides the lore for the military going forward. Um, mm -hmm. And I think many of the traditions that were adopted in Vimy, uh, particularly amongst the, the, the regiments that still exist, and there are quite a few, of course, um, I, I think that that's what it is. I think if you, if you look at, you know, the Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry, if you look at the, the, the Royal 22nd, um, they really, they, they came into their own at that time, I think right. that that's, I think that that's what it is. Um, I perhaps had there been a, a, a big victory earlier on, prior to Vimy, or in a war before Vimy, maybe that would be the the focal point of our of our military pride. But um, you know, I, I don't I don't really know. Again, it's probably a combination of a lot of different factors. But it does does ring true that Vimy has got a magical um, kind of appeal to all Canadians, even if you've never you know, know very little of the battle, but it is. And, and, and I, it's, I don't know, it's one of those things, like one of those iconic victories that every nation has and um, that celebrate for, for generations to come. Well, it's that term, you know, achievement but, and achievable, right? Like that's the, there's a magic to that. Achieving the unachievable. That's yeah. probably it too. I mean, that's very much, I'm sure why, because, you know, here's this little nation, you know, um, the little industrious beaver, we got a job to do. It looks insurmountable, but we're going to do it. And it won't be pretty, but we're going to do it. Yep. And that, I mean, that sums up how we, how we've kind of see ourselves in the world. We may not be the prettiest, but we get the work done. Yeah. No, that's very and, much so. and even if it's, if the, yeah, I mean, I, you, you mentioned also even, I mean, and it's more than just the battle. It's the aftermath of the battle. It's even this, the, the, the massive monument that's built afterwards on Vimy Ridge. Like, um, again, built by a Canadian, um, such an incredible structure. Uh, Walter Allward, I believe. Allward, Walter yep. Allward is the sculptor, um, Canadian. And, uh, you know, it was, it was dedicated by the king. Um, and it was, it, it's, you know, it remains to this day one of the most visited one of the most iconic of all the military uh, memorials and cenotaphs that exist in Europe for the First World War. So much so that, in fact, that I don't know if you're aware of this, Adolf Hitler was so um, taken by it that he ordered it protected during the advance into France during World War II. He forbid any Germans, German armies from firing on it. I, I believe the terms were it was so, not a monument to war. And of course, he was a corps in the war. 
He was, but I, I think uh, I, I was going to ask you about uh, the, the Hitler reference and the and the and the monument itself. And I think the terminology that was given that uh, Vimy, the Vimy Memorial, was a tribute to peace, not a memor not a commemoration of war. Um, it wasn't a thumping of the chest. It wasn't your um, your nineteenth century, you know, knights with swords and and you know proclaiming a victory. There was no victory arch. Um, it, it was um, deliberately, again, all were deliberately chose figures um, that symbolized various, you know, melancholic sort of ideas rather than it being a celebration. Absolutely. You can't, you can't see the monument. You can't be on those grounds and not be tremendously moved. And it's not in a, in a celebratory way. It's a very somber recognition that this had to be done and the job was going to be ugly. Um, and, and yeah. And, and, and the, the iconic figure of, of Mother Canada, uh, as you know, front and center of, of Vimy, and the piece that was un, uh, unveiled when the monument was dedicated in 1936. Uh, you know, just a, such a, a strong symbol. Something I've always been drawn to uh, looking at images of, and, and you know, interpreting the the thought that's conveyed in that in that in that uh, graphic depiction of of, of loss of, of mourning. Uh, but no, it's just, it, it, it's, it's a fascinating chapter to our story and, and uh, of, of the Canadian identity. And, you know, it, it feels in a way as Canada, you know, continues to go and, and, and grow and age and years pass and other conflicts come, Vimy is still that, that pinnacle, that, that pinnacle is perhaps the wrong word. I don't mean it in a celebratory, uh, celebratory sense. Uh, uh, Vimy is still that, that, um, the litmus test against, uh, against, all of the things this was the unachievable target and and canada stood up on its own feet for the first time and it's hard to replicate anything like that vimy stands alone in that sense and, and and you know the thing is we it stands alone and we did it alone and we had to depend on each other and the dynamics of having uh canadians from sea to sea uh you know, it, it can't it can't be undervalued the the motivation that that must have given these men yeah. Um, you know, we had gone past the whole idea of PALS battalions by this point, but nonetheless, when you have, you know, for instance, you know, uh, individuals from Mississauga, we were in the second division, um, as were all Ontario regiments. And, and for sure, you, you knew people in other regiments, you bumped into people that you knew, and um, you had to depend on them with your life. I mean, the, the, just the, the whole kind of dynamics of being at war, where the most important person is the person you're fighting next to that the reason why you're fighting in the moment is because you're fighting for your comrades beside you to know that these are the people that you you know yeah maybe you played hockey against back home who knows but just the idea of the dynamics of having canadians depending on each other to achieve the unachievable might also add to the um to the mystique of this war and of this battle pardon me and um and unlike other battles, you know, as I said, you know, the Can Ontario regiments were in the second division, but every single province was represented in this battle. So, you know, everyone from sea to sea to sea can claim a piece of that Vimy victory, right? And, and I think that's that you, you, you I was going to close on this and, and, and I think you nailed it is this was a combined victory from sea to sea to sea, as you said. Uh, we had indigenous representative uh, at at, uh, at at the Battle of Vimy Ridge. We had all kinds of ethnicities and cultures from across the country, communities from across the country. I mean, Vimy, um, as did as did Passchendaele and others after, later on, but Vimy was that one that connected everyone to a common experience and, sadly, at home, a common loss. Um, and and that becomes something that you see throughout the newspaper stories of the time that. This was an amazing uh, moment for Canadian achievement. I, I remember, I, I, you know, I, I think it was Pierre Burton. I, I've read a number of books on this, so sometimes I lose track of the source of, of, of it. But he said, we, we followed the Red Ensign, but we fought under the Maple Leaf. And the, and the reference was the Maple Leaf was on the cat badges. Yeah. Um, and so, so you made reference earlier about, you know, the, 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 the Maple Leaf graffiti in a sense. But but that's also an identity, right? Like that that that's that's somebody standing up and saying, "I'm not that. I'm, I'm this." <laughs> and I'm this because this did a lot. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. 
and, the and, 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 and there is a direct link. I mean, we've studied this before, but the creation of, you know, many years later and a generation later, the adoption of a national flag and a national symbol, the maple leaf uh, as a symbol was not new, see. but it was not yeah. new, right? It, it, like no, uh, no, no. maple leaf long predated the first world war even yes, as a did. symbol. But but there is that link back to this moment in time of, of the pride of the Maple Leaf of what it achieved. Mm -hmm. um, so Vimy, I think, has at least some uh, some connection to the creation of our national flag as we see it today, the national symbol of what it is to be Canadian. Yeah, absolutely. I would Excellent. agree. So yeah. on, on that, Greg, thank you very much. Uh, you know, no, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> kudos to you, though, as, a, as an educator, as a, as a teacher. Uh, as somebody who is absolutely passionate of, of history to, you know, continue to explore these topics with the rising generation and, and make sure that these stories continue to be passed on. I know you're not alone in that. I know that there are many passionate people who talk about the, the contributions of Canada over the, over the many war years. But, you know, in particular, you've done this for years. Um, I, I know you have. And uh, connecting the, stu the students not only to the, the Canadian story, but also to the Mississauga contribution. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, the story of, you know, there are seven young men who did not return home from the Battle of Vimy Ridge. And, of course, they're, they're in the, the context of a much larger number of fallen from, from Mississauga. But we have those connections, the Vimy Seven um, of, of ours, for lack of a better term. They all had their stories, their, you know, their individual names, their stories. They, they, they come to an end, Vimy. But the, the community continues to remember that contribution. Absolutely. So thank Maybe you, Greg, very much. I appreciate your time. Well, pleasure to be here as always thank you for spending some time with us here at ask a historian and thank you also to greg carraro for sharing his passion his knowledge and just exploring the topic of the battle of vimy ridge and what it means to canadian identity it was such a significant moment in the story of, of canada and canada's involvement in the first world war those days between april 9th and april 12th of 1917 indeed help shape the identity of the nation that would be. Um, in terms of Heritage Mississauga, in terms of historic Mississauga, that is, uh, over 50 soldiers uh, served at the Battle of Vimy Ridge that were from this community, including seven fallen and eight wounded. And we would like to remember and pay tribute to those uh, seven, uh, seven sons of Mississauga who did not return home after the Battle of Vimy Ridge. They were uh, Lieutenant James Howard Fawcett, Sergeant Thomas Cartwright, Private Dennis Anger, Private Eli Rossiter, Private Jack Young, Private Joseph Clark, and Private William Kidd. We will remember you. 